when it comes to hydrogen refueling, there is quite a big difference. I rather fill out a hydrogen fueling station than a gasoline station due to the fact that the gasoline stations have been developed from the 1940s and 50s. Many of the standards and many of the safety concerns have been grandfathered in. When we look at development of standards, we're looking at what is safe to fuel with the knowledge that we know today, not from what we knew earlier. With this knowledge, we're able to ensure that we design fully safe hydrogen stations. Cross Global is primarily an alternate fuel dispenser manufacturer. So that would encase propane, natural gas, hydrogen, and very soon liquefied natural gas. So we got quite a good head start in targeting from South America, uh, Middle East, Europe, Asia. 80% of our business would be outside of North America. At Krauss, we're primarily an assembler and tester. Mainly the components come into our factory, assembled into sub-assemblies, and they move down the line to where they finally get put into the dispenser. You do some f uh, final wiring, tubing, moves on to the test bay. Every unit is tested fully, and once it's approved, out the door to the end customer. When the public sees hydrogen at a station, they see the dispenser. They don't often see the storage or the compression or any of the other equipment that's very vital, but it's hidden from the public's point of view. Uh, hydrogen is about the vehicle that they're driving and the dispenser that they're filling it at. To compare a hydrogen dispenser to a gasoline dispenser, you can't pump uh, a gas. You have to move it on a basis of a pressure differential. So instead of a pump that draws fluid out, you have uh, valving that opens and closes to control the flow of gas to the vehicle. Instead of a uh, turbine meter and a gasoline dispenser that spins uh, to give you a reading on volume, you have a mass flow meter which senses the molecules of hydrogen flowing through it and gives you that same mass reading on the display. One of the challenges with any new uh, energy is distribution. In particular, the, the gasoline stations already exist. You're trying to compete with something that has been built up over a hundred years. Initially, there will be hydrogen projects where buses return to a depot to fuel at night. Or where you have the forklifts operating under one roof at a warehouse. The biggest barrier right now is probably the lack of vehicles. Now, if you talk to an OEM vehicle manufacturer, they'll say the biggest barrier is the lack of stations. I'd say we're both right. It's a chicken and egg challenge. Do you bring out the vehicles first or do you bring the stations out first? Well, you need both. You'll see reports that have suggested that it's going to cost up to a trillion dollars to develop a new uh, fueling infrastructure if we're going to deploy hydrogen in this country. Uh, the truth of the matter is uh, that is uh, totally wrong. The ERC has developed a technology called hydrogen on demand. And what it is, is we can use a wide variety of feedstocks, which are readily available, to produce hydrogen as you're filling your vehicle. No more than you need to fill it. It produces it on the spot, in real time, while you're filling the vehicle. It eliminates the cost of pressurizing the hydrogen, major cost out of the picture. Secondly, we eliminate the need for storage another big cost of the picture. Third key thing, we can use just about every existing gas station in this country for this technology and you can drive up to that station, you can buy gasoline, you can buy an ethanol blend, you can buy diesel, you can buy hydrogen. Funding provided by the U.S. Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Laboratory, the Energy and Environmental Research Center's National Center for Hydrogen Technology, and the members of Prairie Public.